welcome to today Galactic Talk. I'm your host, Daino AGL. So today we do have an order. We, do, uh, we have Gene Decode. Okay, so the, Gene Decode is, uh, is a veteran. Uh, he's been in the uh, Navy. He's also a martial artist. And, it's been, and Gene's been, you know, uh, been sharing information on the net through various shows. All right, so regarding stuff that, you know, most of the people would not even think about. All right, so Gene, uh, welcome to our show. We appreciate your time. I know we have a two hour difference, but we really do appreciate, you know, the fact that you're here now and you're going to share information to the people. So thank you, Gene. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to be on your platform. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's an honor. So, Gene, uh, a lot of people hear, hear you, you know, so through various shows and they know, yeah, uh, this gentleman has a lot of, uh, you know, information. One of the stuff, too, I really want to cover is you're a martial artist and that's something key because uh, it allows, you know, uh, to maintain not only like the, the chi, the kundalini, but at the same time too, you know, um, even your mind, your mind energy, and more of it. So, I remember Gene in one of your sh in one of the shows that you attend, uh, you mentioned that you know you do practice qigong. But before qigong, could you go again with the different? Uh, I don't want to say style, but let's say you know numerous let's say the various aspect of martial arts that you've been doing and training. Yeah, so um, it kind of goes into like the way I live my whole life. Um, my father and my family, I was brought up very, uh, not on my own, I research a lot from very, the very first thing I start reading was the I Ching when I learned to read. I mean, it's just the way I am. I like to learn things. And then from the day I started walking, I was put on skis and was downhill ski. And then um, every day possible, my father would take us into the mountains in Colorado and either winter be skiing or cross country skiing or uh, summer would be rock climbing, backpacking, hiking. And he taught me survival. So, you know, how, you know, how to survive out in the wilderness in any time of the year. And so it just kind of led that way at uh, about eight years old for a little bit of time. I got into uh, jujitsu with my father. <clears throat> he took that. And then once I went in the military, I wanted to learn martial arts. And the first submarine I was on during Vietnam, we had uh, Navy SEALs. So watching them train and work out uh, you know, just to stay in shape for ops and things like that, I was fascinated. So I found, I searched out when I got to my second submarine, because on that one, I was so busy, I'd never had any time to train. I would just do, in high school, I lettered in cross country and um, that, and I was very physical. I also was weightlifting and had the record for several different things in the school, you know, for like uh, inverted sit-ups, hanging upside down, doing sit-ups, that kind of thing. So I just love being in shape uh, mentally, emotionally, and physically. For me, it's all together and spiritually now. So, you know, the martial arts for me is a total life practice in which it affects every part of your beingness. So it changed everything about me as I got deep into martial arts through Tai Chi and Qigong. And the first one I started, uh, the instructor called it Kimpo. But uh, since that time, I've been all over the U.S. looking at Kimpo schools. It's not even close to what I learned. Uh, it was essentially, you know, SAR school training. He, the, my first instructor was SAR school instructor. He ran SARS. And so he was essentially the best of the best. And I was so fortunate to have him for the time, you know, up until he, he ended his uh, mortal coil and left earth. He trained me and <clears throat> I became essentially like in the Star Wars term, the Padawan of his mm -hmm. primary student. So he taught me stuff that they don't normally teach everybody else. 
So it's learning techniques that after a while get to the point which kind of starts to red pill you in the sense that you're doing things that should be impossible by the laws of physics as we understand them. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> practice this weird stuff. I'm like, what exactly? I'm actually doing these things. Is, is this makes this possible? And then after that, uh, once he had left the earth, uh, my second instructor was actually a better fighter and taught me to fight really, really well. Uh, my first instructor also taught me a screamer, which is Filipino stick fighting that he used in Nam. My second instructor was Shodan Yu, Goju, and Kendo. So the Japanese sword fighting techniques plus two Okinawan styles. And during that time, I got assigned to a submarine, what made me get into Tai Chi. Submarines is kind of like, a lot like prison in actuality. Um, it's a community in which there's a way of being that's pretty much understood in the community. But if you're not in that community, and you don't know it, um, it causes difficulty. So we had pulled in, we were in the Mediterranean and we uh, pulled in and loaded like 90 day stores and pulled out and we were going out through another special forces submarine through the uh, Irish Sea. And we'd taken some new personnel on board and there was a guy off the aircraft carriers who had never been in submarine. Well, submarines, when you load for 90 days, you have cans stacked on the deck to the, so that you actually have to hunch over. And this submarine is a fast attack submarine. It, the passageways are very narrow. You always bump each other as you go by. You can't pass somebody without rubbing chest or rubbing backs or rubbing shoulder or something. And unless the person gets hurt, if they go, ow, you turn and you nod because you're in such a hurry. You're tired all the time. You're getting three, four hours of sleep a week and five minutes here, five minutes there. So, you know, to sit there and go, excuse me, sorry, sorry, excuse me, sorry, <laughs> it's ridiculous. And so you just nod, which means, okay, I'm sorry, I, you know, did that. So I was late for watch. I was hurrying. I have to go through the entire ship, check all the equipment, all of this. Then I have, when I go on watch, I have to set up all the gear and the way I use the gear and look at certain things and the oncoming officer of the deck, the offgoing officer of the deck, the captain, the EXO, everybody comes in and asks me, you know, what's, what do we have? What's going on? All of this stuff. And so, you know, I'm just, I'm busy as heck, you know, I'm, when I'm on watch and I was getting ready to go on watch and I only have like five minutes to eat. The chow's almost done time. So I'm slamming the food down. I get up and you have to literally step up on cans and I, my knee brushed the guy's back, which always happens. But this was this new guy off of care. And, you know, I got to the chow hall door and he goes, Hey, you need me in the back. You know, said so my name, need me in the back and my last name. And then I turn and I nodded. I mean, sorry, you know, because now I got to run through the check, check gears, check all the locks. <laughs> so I'm sitting on uh, my watch, and then I'm doors are opening, closing, off, going off as a deck, XO, et cetera. All these people are coming and going. And then out of the corner of the eye, I see a fist coming from my head. And I didn't even, you know, martial arts, you train conditioned response. I didn't even think I cobra blocked him. And it shat, I could feel the wave go up the radius and the all net, just like a ripple. I'm like, the bone is rippling? Oh, no. <laughs> there is no bone. <laughs> like, it's just shattered both bones in his arm. And his eyes rolled back and he collapsed. And so, you know, due to that, and he was at 16 months in a cast. And so I realized that, you know, wow, my power is not only off the chart, but way out of control. I just wanted to not get hit in the head. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to put the guy lame for life, you know? So I was just like, oh my goodness, I need to get a little soft technique here and learn to get my power under control and use it appropriately. So when I got off that submarine, I got transferred to Hawaii where I started taking Yang style Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. And that instructor um, also uh, taught um, a couple other kind of esoteric things that don't really have a name that he had learned from Hawaiian kind of kahuna-like situations. <laughs> so techniques for cleansing the body with Tai Chi movements with trees and plants, using their energy to help heal your body. 
And then I was using the techniques to climb up waterfalls in Hawaii and all kinds of stuff. So, and, you know, body surfing and doing kind of weird things, big, huge waves and <laughs> all kinds of things. And then, uh, after, you know, from there, um, I got out of the Navy, retired, and I found a Shaolin, the next person. So I started uh, learning fire flower Qigong, the Damo Qigong. <clears throat> which Damo is essentially the father of martial arts on earth, pretty much. And then also um, branched into Sun style and a little bit of Wu style of the Tai Chi and then kind of started combining everything I know. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, I started studying some Native American type shamanistic movements, uh, what they call energy passes, mm -hmm. where you learn some pretty out there kind of stuff like running on the wind, running with the rolling force, stalking, gate of power, all of these things. So I started combining and by that time I was, you know, had only a couple students because most students, you freak them out too bad when you do that stuff. They're like, what the heck is this stuff? <laughs> so that pretty much is actually how I wound up meeting my wife. It's responsible for my red pilling because through the kendo, um, I wound, was in Hawaii. I was sparring, not actually sparring. A big, huge guy attacked me. His Samoan guy is about probably around 400 pounds. I did a flying scissor throw. And when he hit the ground, he landed on top of my right leg and dislocated my knee, flipped over and dislocated my other knee. So in the, I wound up get, stuffing him in the trash can eventually through ground technique. And then I had to go over to my car and reset my knee. So the very next day when my student came back from Japan with a ninja sword mm -hmm. and I was showing him a, a, what's called a double pass. It actually, in shifting, like my knee started coming back apart. So I stopped the shift, but it wound up, because I stopped, I'm coming down with the sword full blast. I put the sword in the top of my knee and that caused my death experience, which you know changed my life completely and who I am essentially. And so through the martial arts, you know, I've met my wife, I've changed who I am, I got close to God, I got to talk to God for 30 straight minutes, I was dead for 30 minutes during that death experience, all of that is because of the martial arts, all of the way, you know, my health, all of the health protocols I, that I developed is in concert with trying to get my body healthy and get over things that happened to me, and all of that came from studying martial arts. So martial arts is definitive as, as to who I am. And, you know, all the time throughout I learned, I would actually have where people would take pictures when you're not walk, looking or something. I would look at the picture and make sure I'm in form. Am I walking right? Am I standing right? Am I moving? And, you know, once you're, you're practicing at that level, it becomes, it literally becomes who you are. I've had when I was in my dress whites carrying my sea bag, a guy come up and actually asked me, what style of martial arts do you do? <laughs> I was like, this is obvious? He goes, everything you do. And I've had, you know, sitting at a table in a restaurant meeting somebody or something. And they go, oh, what kind of martial arts do you do? <laughs> Every way you move is a martial arts way. You, it is who you are. It defines who you are. It changes who you are. Your reaction times go so high. Um, that's one of the things that taught me patience because my reaction times are now so high that when I'm driving or I'm in a store, I had a friend I haven't seen for 30 years. He knew me back during my first instructor and he heard my voice on an interview, knew my laugh, knew my voice, contacted me through my Gmail and we went you know, around the... I shopping one day with me around the area where I live. And he said, in the store, I feel like I'm decrepit with you because you disappear. You take off like you're 20 years old through the store. You're moving and zipping past people. It was like, well, you know, it is who I am. It, you just move smooth. You move quick. You move light. Um, you essentially float around and through things and your reaction time is so much quicker than, you know, everybody else you're around because you're just always that way. And now it's essentially, you know, I've been doing that martial arts for 44 years. So, uh, and my, with my wife, which, you know, she's 
been training with me since 97. So we work out and train together and it's like we're one unit in martial arts and the art is a living thing. It's actually a living force that you could feel within you. Um, you could feel the ancient masters through you and all of that. And so it's literally, you know, for me, the prime motivator in my life that brought me everything of who I am in my life. Uh, that's very interesting, actually. And some of the, the things that you mentioned, I do affirm it with, you know, personal experience. So thanks a lot, Gene. And just only that introduction, Gene, so, you know, will raise many questions on, on my hand, especially. So Gene, could you share to the people two techniques? So we're gonna go with Qigong. I'm sharing a picture here. Could you share like to the pe people, like, you know, in esoteric uh, uh, application of Qigong? And go ahead, uh, go ahead, Gene. Sure. So uh, primarily what you're looking at um, is the mini orbital. So when you breathe in, in martial arts and to get the chi flowing through the body is you're powering up the mini orbital. So you have a certain stance. Um, I modified things to be perfectly uh, in alignment. So for example, when I stand, this person looks here like they're slightly duck-toed, which is kind of standard with most people. Mm -hmm. I stand with my feet perfectly shoulder width, perfectly parallel to each other. So the way I do that is I'll stand on one foot and bend down until my knee makes mm -hmm. my toe disappear. Then I take the other foot and I lower it to the floor in that position. And that means when your foot hits the floor, when you go back upright, your feet will be exactly shoulder width apart. And then you, if you draw a line down the inside of each foot, those lines should be parallel. If you have a floor with lines on it, it'll help like tiling or something like that. So I practiced until my feet are always perfectly straight because if you're duck toed like this and somebody pushes you or hits you on the front, you're going to fall over backwards because it throws your weight to the rear. Most Americans um, uh, throughout the American continents stand this way. Most Asians stand pigeon-toed where the toes are turned in. And that throws, of course, your weight forward. So then if you're pulled or hit from behind, you fall forward. So it's best to have the feet perfectly parallel and then shoulder width. And then when you breathe, you breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And as you breathe in, the energy goes up the nose, through the third eye, through the crown chakra, down through the back, as you see here, through C7, T11. Um, T8 is actually a real important point as well. And then goes up through the sacrum, the perineum, and into the... Uh, Don Chin is actually the center of gravity for the entire body. If and there's what's called the rule of hands in the body. So yeah. if you look at the your size of your fist, the width of your hand is the distance that the Don Tin is in from the wall of the stomach and the spine. And the length of the hand is the distance, the size of the hand is exactly the distance, the full distance of the Don Tin, but the length of the hand from one edge from like the uh, people would say karate chop edge or the, the edge of your hand to the inside of your, where your thumb attaches, that width is the up from the perineum, the distance to the bottom of the dantian and down from the belly button. So that area is where you want to breathe from. When you breathe in, that the, the dantian should go in. When you breathe out, the Don Tin should actually move out. That's true deep breathing. Diaphragm breathing, if you're breathing from there, if somebody hits you there, you'll pass out. Get the wind knocked out of you, as they say. If you breathe from the Don Tin, that doesn't happen. If you're breathing from the jaw, a lot of people breathe from the jaw. It's what boxers call a glass jaw. Wherever you breathe from, other than the Don Tin, if you get hit in that spot, you're out cold. If you hit in the jaw and you breathe from the jaw, you're out cold and you probably get your jaw broken. That's why they call it a glass jaw. 
So you want to breathe in and you practice by having either somebody push on your down 10 or lay on the floor and put a book or two or three or 10 or have somebody eventually, my instructor would stand on our down 10 with one foot, you know, the ball of his foot or just his heel and you have to raise him up and down with each breath. And you need, you know, I got to where I could pulse him up and down about four inches. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's about 180 pounds. So you get a bit, pretty good, powerful. And an advanced martial artist has been doing 30, 40 years. If you do an MRI over the Dantian, it'll look like they have a hockey puck actually in the Dantian area. There'll be something solid there. There's so much chi there that it actually blocks the MRI. It'll be a shadow zone of something so solid that the MRI picks it up. <clears throat> so then breathing in, the energy goes up, down the back, and into the Don Tien, spins backwards. Mm-hmm. Then when you breathe out, it, it, it reverses, and the Don Tien spins forward and downwards, and it goes back up the spine and down, and then out the mouth. And so when you're doing that, you also want to have the tongue on the roof of the mouth, on the palate. So that keeps it from having to jump like a spark gap. Uh, so the flow is smooth through the through the miniature, miniature orbital. So the stance you want to do in Qigong is the feet perfectly parallel and you bend your knees down to where if you look down your knee, you see the middle of your foot. So your knees aren't locked because as you can see, there's you're rooting yourself through the heels. It's actually called breathing through the heels from the earth's energy and then on the out breath. And then on the in breath, you're breathing in from the stars and from all of creation, from the central sun, you're pulling the energy in through the crown chakra in that circulation and the out breath, you're rooting down to the core of the earth, the central sun at the center of the earth. So you're rooting yourself with all of creation while you're doing this. And so it's balancing and it's circulating your energy. And then, you know, if you're, you're holding your hands, as you see here, his elbows are actually, his arms are a little high. You want them at heart height, this is part of how I do sun gazing in this stance. Uh, you want your hands naturally at heart health. So like if someone was holding your wrists, your elbows would be hanging loose and downwards. Yeah. It would be even and up like chicken wings, we call it, where you have your arms out, your elbows out like a chicken wing. You want your elbows to hang down, naturally relax because positive chi flows in soft and curves where negative chi flows when things are stiff and straight or in or straight. So if you have stiffness or you're locked out joints like this person, then uh, you will have more negative chi flowing than positive chi and you want to be centered at the heart. So you want your hands out in front of your heart. And if you were to hold your hand up perpendicular to the earth with your fingers pointing up, one hand width between each hand is the distance. And then you also want, you don't want to do, it looks like he's what I call hitchhiking, where you have your thumb tight and pointed up, which again, throws energy and pulls negative energy in. So you want to have your hands completely relaxed so that such that when you, you know, if you hit the a, a surface, it sounds like a cup, like you can hear a hollow sound. So when you hit, you hear it like a popping noise, especially on concrete, you'll hear like a cup noise. So your hands should be very relaxed and your whole body is relaxed. And then when I do the sun gazing, I actually will flex one, you know, do what's called a mudra where yeah. you do certain fingers and touch in certain positions that channel the energy through certain chakra because the chakras, what they don't tell us, you know, is that we're created in God's image. It means that in every way. So we have three circulatory system, energy circulatory systems in the body, not in Western medicine, they only go into two. They go into cardiovascular, which is your veins, arteries, capillaries, and heart. They go into the lymphatic system, which is veins, capillaries, and arteries, but the pump is your muscles. The arteries and, you know, everything actually deads in the muscles and then receives in the muscles and goes back up hu- two huge vena cava, they call it, in a reservoir in your uh, abdominal area. <clears throat> so the pump for the lymphatic system is the muscle movement. That's why Qigong and Tai Chi is so important is you're pumping that. 
if you're not pumping that every day, there is no pump. So it gets stagnant. Now, that's the feeling you need when you want to stretch because the body wants to get that lymphatic fluid moving get, to get the toxins out of the muscles. But the third system is the chakra systems part of it. The, the energy points you see here is part of it. All of the acupuncture meridians and points are, are all part of it. What it actually is, it's a fiber optic system, literally fiber optics in the human body that if you look at the, the chakra, you see what looked like a fiber optic bundle and the energy spinning in them. And so all the chakras are, it just means, you know, essentially spinning ball in ancient Hindu. And so what that means is these little spinning balls of energy in these fiber optic fiber bundles are controlling the organs and sending information to and from the organs and into the acupuncture meridians in that area to connect the entire body. So that third circulatory system, they've actually now found that it radiates ultraviolet light through it. So that actually sends energy. And that's part of the way that in this Tai Chi and Qigong, you're focusing the energy. So you have here your palms facing your heart. The center of your palm, you have a very small chakra. It's what Reiki and a lot of energy healers that do hands-on or massage or you know distance healing from the palms of their hands, you can learn to throw energy off the palms of your hands, literally. And there's a potentialization technique that I teach to do that as well. That's very powerful. So the Qigong Tai Chi, you know, the Damo set, you, you, that's, you're running through various positions where Qigong is like standing, you're not moving like in Tai Chi where you're constantly floats, flowing at different speeds and different rates and very smooth. In Qigong, you hold forms for periods of time. And as you get more advanced, the period of time goes up to where you will get to where you hold a form for an entire day, like four or five, six, up to 12 hours without moving. It seems like for the average person, that's not possible, I know. <laughs> but I've actually sun gazed at a lake up in the mountains of Colorado when I dropped my wife for a marathon. And they started running at around six in the morning. And then at about two in the afternoon, that entire time was beautiful. It was fall and the, the aspen leaves are turning. And so I was like, wow, what a perfect time. Sun came up over the trees. So I sat there sun gazing for five hours straight while holding essentially a stance very close to this while I'm watching the sun come up and go up over the lake. And some people came by <laughs> and just standing like a statue, you know, as far as they could tell, they don't see any movement. You know, they're not paying attention to the Don Tien moving. And so they walked all the way around the lake. And then I realized, okay, if they've gone all the way around this big lake, I probably need to go down and pick up my wife. So I got in my Jeep and left. And they're like, what? I thought it was a statue. <laughs> So you learn to get, you know, focus, patience, the energy flowing, softness. You learn to be, you know, if you're with an opponent or in a situation when they're hard, you're soft. When they're soft, you're hard. You learn to uh, use variegated movement. So you're not always using like the constant speed. You're changing speed. So you're unpredictable. Um, there's all kinds of uh, advantages to it. It teaches you to be highly coordinated, walk in balance. You walk in balance, you think in balance, you move in balance, you, everything about you, your emotions stay in balance. So it teaches you to be very calm within yourself. Excellent, excellent information, Jim. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, very, uh, yeah, it's very profound. It's and uh, when you mentioned, uh, Jim, you were standing, you know, uh, during five hours, uh, you kind of go out of the uh, time uh, paradigm, right? Yeah. Um, also, like in Chai Chi, it was about, because I've been in martial arts by that time, you know, 20 years, the first time it happened. And I just fairly knew only five years in Tai Chi. And I was teaching a student at the time I was living in Puerto Rico. I was standing on my back porch. So one side is the ocean, the Caribbean, beautiful, beautiful day. The other side is the rainforest and the cokies are singing, the frogs and things, you know. So very, very beautiful, relaxing, beautiful day. And I was doing the cloud hands part of the form. And all of a sudden, my, my I can feel the chi moving. My body is moving with the chi by 
through from the chi. It's like Bruce Lee said, I don't punch, the punch punches me. The the four, you know, the art was moving me, and I stop. I went, Whoa, what was that? She goes, What? I go, right? It was moving me. <laughs> it was like you can feel the the chi literally moving through your body and moving you and you're flowing. So, you know, you have forms so that forms so that when you do it with another, each time you add person, it goes up. The amount of energy present, like if you're doing it alone, of course, it's you. But if it's two people, it's squared. If it's three people, it's the ninth. It's like nine people's amount of energy. It's squared for the number of people present. That's why you have form. But if you're alone, when I'm doing Tai Chi by myself out in the wilderness or something, I'm flowing with the energy that's around me. So I don't know, have any idea what I'm going to do. It's not thinking. It's the, the energy of the chi of the forest and the lake and everything is flowing through. You, you can feel it moving through your body. You're one, like the trees blowing with the wind and you're, you're like a tree moving with the wind and moving with the tree and moving with the sky and moving with the water and the water beneath the ground. I mean, it's very uh, unifying with all of creation. And that's why you do it with the hands over the heart too, is you're unifying through your heart with all of creation and with creator. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Gene. So now we're going to go, I just want to go now, Gene, to an event that you shared last year. So it was regarding a, a blast that occurred in the Arctic around May. But before going to this, so uh, I know you went on James Rank uh, show. So it's regarding the, uh, the concept of the alliance. So Gene, is it right to say the, the Alliance is also known as the uh, Solar Warden? Solar Warden is part of the Alliance. Okay. The okay. Alliance is a vast group of beings, humans being part of that, Solar Warden being part of that. Uh, additionally, there's Arcturian, the good side of the Palladians, um, quite a few other groups involved. Mm -hmm. Tengri Tengri kind of sort of involved. They've been part of what was the Council of Five, which is now the Council of Seven, and doing the tribunals for the non-terrestrials that are in violation <clears throat> and doing crimes against humanity and in violation of the laws of creator. And mm -hmm. so there's lots of things, groups that are helping the human race now that we're a civilization that is allowed to be helped. To be helped, you have to first stand up for yourself, for one thing, and say that you, you know, you want to be in the highest interest of all life everywhere and serve creator. And then the uh, other requisite is that you do have space travel. And so now that those two are aligned, that we do get help. And the negative side is actually violating the Treaty of Alderaan for ages and been aiding the cabal for a very long time and giving them technology. So the dark fleet is actually given a lot of the technology for the dark fleet and actually their first light fleet of ships was given by the, the Alpha Draco, which looked like the big Star Wars cruisers. Yeah, exactly. So I do want to uh, ask you something with you know the conversion of submarines into a space uh, yeah. fleet. Before yeah, they're this, a perfect vessel for it. Yeah, so before this, uh, one of your coordinator actually, uh, you know, sent me this. So, you know, it's worth, regarding the uh, the blast over the Arctic. So about one, one, 150 Cabal members, Draco, and two of Somerset, but not a lot of daughters tried to escape Earth in a ship over the Arctic. They were taken yeah, the out. two Somerset daughter actually turned out to Somerset Belanoff actually mm -hmm. doesn't exist. That was a psyop that was actually just a Mahavingian line, the House mm -hmm. of Orange. So that was actually to the House of Orange daughters. Mm. Sounds so good. So Gene. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, the House of Orange currently is the top of the, the bloodlines of Cain. Um, the top family of the 13 families right now on the house, the Canaanite, uh, the, the cabal, is the Markovingian line. 
And the top of that was the, uh, and currently still is the House of Orange, which is mainly out of Netherlands. And so what happened in this was that the two top in the cabal, the female, just like in the Draco, the female run the show. They're the ones that make all, yeah, the males do the battles, just like in the Zulu time. Chaka Zulu, yeah, he's doing the battle and all the men are the battle, but the one that actually did all the battle plans and ran everything was his mother and his sister. So same thing here. So the uh, House of Orange is, you know, and I'm doing uh, currently with the Netherlands coordinator, Dom D. Coates on Blessed to Teach on Netherlands uh, last week and this week, because it's the center of the cabal power on earth at this time. So when this ship, they were, they're constantly trying to get off because they're like rats for them leaving a sinking ship because they're losing control. They've lost control of the solar system. They're lose, they're losing all their control on earth. So now they're, you know, this was a, a more ancient ship. It had a uh, fusion drive. And mm -hmm. as it tried to escape, what it was trying to do is, if you remember during that time, there was a comet they called the hy hyperbola. Um, because it was traveling on a hyperbolic course under its own power, it was actually deaccelerating and then reaccelerating. Comets don't do that. <laughs> That's not natural for a thing without drive to be able to change speed. So, what the uh, cabal tried to do is to use the the portal that that ship used to come through and the door the, the interdimensional doorway to escape through the arctic energy hole that the arctic energy creates from the central sun they were going to ride that out and to get off the earth but that what that comet actually was was a arcturian mothership coming in so you're actually going to head straight for an Arcturian mothership. Brilliant plan. <laughs> you know, like play chicken with an Arcturian mothership with massive shield ability. So the ship, rather than just letting it crash into them uh, and explode on their shielding, uh, just hit them with a particle beam, which caused the chain reaction, caused the fusion reactor to, to blow up that ship over the Arctic. It caused a hole in the ozone for a period of time, but the Arcturian ship came down with advanced technology and fixed that hole. Only took them about three days. Okay. And did the Syrians uh, had some implication on that as well? Uh, yes, they did. Also, the Palladians helped as well. Okay. And Gene, I'm just showing a picture here. So I'm just going to go quickly, quickly. So you mentioned uh, last year as well, uh, actually, you know, like individual and the individuals like Obama and Epstein were taking, uh, were brought to a special place, actually, an underground round. Uh, I'm not really, is it, was it Greenland or Iceland? It was Iceland that they came out of. There's a dumb that they took out this month in Iceland. Um, there were, if you look at, for dumbs, it's really easy. And I had a person that sent me a study of this, of all the 10 kilometer earthquakes going back by presidential terms in the US. And it's fascinating, you'll see tons in the 40, late 40s when they got nuclear power, Good. how they create them is they have a boring device that just drops and has a particle beam on the front end. And as it drops, it has a time device and it detonates a neutron bomb at a certain time, which equal, of course equates to a depth because they always drop at a constant rate because particle beams don't care what they're boring through. Mm -hmm. They're falling at the speed of gravity and boring constantly. So when it gets to a certain depth, so you can overlay if you know the constellations, because that's how they create the domes. They lay it out on star grids. So if you look at North America, especially the US, they're laid out on the constellation Gemini and Orion and several other ones. But in the US, it's Gemini and Orion. They overlay perfectly. So if you were to go back to the like 47 and 50, yeah, the early 50s, you're going to see earthquakes at 10 kilometers perfectly matching the stars of the constellations Gemini and Orion 
<laughs> this is like the Earth has earthquakes at 10 kilometers on star charts. <laughs> <It's> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and now you can see earthquakes perfectly at those same positions again, and then they'll vary now because now you have a completely built out dome. So, yeah, you come in at 10 kilometers and then you have the device blow up and then you have this huge cavern. So you have concrete and steel flooring and layers and layers and floors and all kinds of infrastructure that now are at different depths. So you have to take out first the 10 kilometer stuff where you come in through the maglev and then you work your way throughout the entire thing. So in Iceland and they often, the Alliance will use natural help. So in Iceland, what they did is they used the lava tubes once they were done clearing out the dome that was in Reykjavik to Keflavik, that whole Harbor in Iceland is a massive dome. So they cleared that out and then they blew the lava tubes and flooded it with lava, which started coming up to people in Iceland. It was shaking every day, nonstop, no more than five minutes break for like an, a week. And then now the volcano is erupting because, of course, you blew all the lava tubes, you create instability, so it causes a volcanic eruption. But they flooded that entire area. So if you go toward, you can see a big harbor area there. If you blow it up, you should be able to see Keflavik and Reykjavik, and that's where they took out. And then, you know, if you go on the USGS map and look back over the month, the amount of earthquakes in that area is off the chart. Mm. So that's yeah. that's the, one of the reasons that you mentioned, uh, you know, whenever, you know, it's reporting uh, some activities at the depth of 10 kilometers flat, right? Yeah, so for example, if you go to your map up here, the stack of papers, if you'll click on that, mm -hmm. you'll be able to go off grayscale and see terrain. Click terrain. Uh, yeah. Okay, now click on the papers and that, uh, click close and it'll go away. Now click the little gear next to the question mark and you can change to the last 30 days, you'll get a massive amount of earthquakes, but go to 30 days all magnitudes on the bottom. Yep. And then you can close that by clicking on the gear again. Oh. Uh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, oh, right. Back arrow. There you go. <clears throat> there you go. So, okay. Yeah. So now if you, you zoom into Iceland, you can see where that earthquake is there. Many, 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 many. Oh. That's the dome. Mm -hmm. And that's also, of course, where the volcano is. But if you look at the, the majority of those are all at 10 kilometers. I got you. Yeah, that one, 10 kilometers. Yeah. So you can see it actually circles. Um, in nature, um, lava tubes actually do, it's one of the few things that is pretty straight. Nature doesn't usually do straight lines, but lava tubes tend to run fairly straight. And to have an arc like that and series of arcs and all of that is, is not really very natural <laughs> for a lava tube. <laughs> and then you have a straight line there, which could be a lava tube, but you, to, you know, they vary depth. They don't always just stay at one depth. And so to have that many things going on over that time frame, And then, <clears throat> for example, right now, if you go to Greece, they're working on a dumb in Greece. And so even... You know, you can see the earthquakes, again, a massive amount in Greece. And that's the Jerusalem to Vatican Dome that their maglev system, they're taking out that group right there. Yeah. And again, you'll see the majority at 10 kilometers. <laughs> just, just interesting how earthquakes just love that depth. <laughs> It's really? like, let's do 10 kilometers. Let's just hang out at 10 kilometers. We don't like any other depth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, thanks a lot, Gene. So Gene, um, could you share one of your uh, shows if someone that, you know, would like to go, go over and, you know, introduce himself or herself to the uh, deep underground base? Would you remember what which show that you did would cover that? Yeah, uh, blessed to teach is where I do most of the decodes on the dumps. Okay. Starting about two years ago, um, uh -huh. that's when I actually got me kind of people knowing who I am. 
as I went on Rick's show and did a co- first decodes weren't domes actually was on um, Trump's visit to uh, the British Isles mm-hmm. and the, with the Queen and showing all the code of how he's showing he's in charge. He went and signed the the uh, Virginia Company ledger in Westminster Abbey. He walked in front of the Queen. That he reviewed the troops while American military music was playing, showing that the American military controls the military there, and they are the U.S. military, the American military now. And then, you know, so there was lots of code in that. And I decoded that, and then I did the dumb decode. Mm -hmm. And very shortly after that, you know, I put out my my Gmail, and many, many people started emailing me from all over the world. And um, I got people that actually started emailing me that were special forces saying, yeah, we're clearing out dumps. I just left the dump at this latitude longitude. So I got more information on dumps. So I did a second one. And then now it's I've, the number of <laughs> dumb decos I've lost track. It's in the 40, I think, somewhere area, uh, along with a team of coordinators that help answer the Gmail that I have all over the world. And a lot of them now have, have you know, how to decode and learn like the, these depths and then notice the patterns, plus go and look at the structures on you know in the cities and see the satanic codes because they always like you know in in 16 plus one shows they uh, symbols will be their downfall they always like you know with the domes they lay them out on star charts on um the cities they're laid out with pentagrams and hexagrams and tau crosses and you know all kinds of satanic symbols so you can figure out where the domes are and the names of things you know like we're doing netherlands and i we're look, you know, looking at the dumb in this one area. I go, what's the name? What is this? And the, it's this weird looking museum that looks like a ship. I go, oh, shipping, because they look at us. And they rule us by admiralty law, and they go, you know, they ship us around. And this is a museum built like a weird looking ship, and the colors, mind control colors, and the pictures and the art inside is very satanic, and you know human trafficking and pedophile, all this kind of stuff. So I'm like, what's the name of this street mean? It means owl. <laughs> like, oh, wow. This is like everything you're looking in this area ties into human trafficking and everything. I'm like, wow. So they're learning to do this. So the Germany group, the Europe group, the Netherlands group, the Africa group, they've all done decodes in Australia on the domes there. So they're People are learning how to do this all over the world and see the patterns and know what's going on and wake up so that they know what's going on and they can see it. So now that's on Blessed to Teach. Uh, all of those are on the Blessed to Teach website. That's uh, And then from there, you can also, if you want to hear me, <laughs> if you like to hear me, I, mean, I guess people do. Um, I'm on there three, four times a week on a backstage and then twice a month, I'm doing once a month, I do a decode on uh, the space programs and the non terrestrial groups on Gene Unleashed. And then once a month, besides that, I do QA on Gene Unleashed. And on the backstage, I do QA once a month as well, where I go about anywhere between three and it's gone up to seven hours when I have the stamina to go that long where I'll do questions and answers from people all over the world can actually, you know, ask a question and like you're doing now and uh, just go into all kinds. And I do decodes on different groups. So I did the Alpha Draco, the uh, Anunnaki, going into the truth of the Anunnaki because Sechen was paid by the Cabal and a way up there in the Cabal. He's kind of like Spacey where he was so violent and evil that the cabal dreaded him when he showed up at like uh bohemian grove Mm -hmm. they were terrified of him he was a monster beyond belief he would just he would tear parts of the cabal up when he would go to those meetings so he wrote the genesis you know the in all genesis and the 12th you know planet and all that stuff that he wrote about he changed things around not perfect translation of the Sumerian scrolls so that when 
things came out and archaeological finds were reported in Antarctica and other places that it would make it look as if they were children of and that the Bible was referring to the Anunnaki as God mm -hmm. and that they are the gods that created the human race. And like Juan O'Savin said, and you know, this is my information as well. And I totally agree with, yeah, they create the Anunnaki needed gold came down and they created something. All right. But it sure humans were already here. Mm -hmm. It certainly wasn't humanity. It was something else. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the bloodlines of Cain. And I did a decode on that. And, uh, you know, it's them. It, yeah. cre it created the 13 bloodlines through genetic hybriding of um, the uh, Neanderthal, cro -Mag, Alpha Draco, and several other things, but not humans. So mm -hmm. because of what they are, a lot like a real lizard, <clears throat> some of the chakras aren't running. So their heart chakra isn't running. So there is no compassion or empathy. Uh, so when they, that's why their main motto is the, you know, do as thou will. There's no compassion or care for anybody but themselves. And it starts with the individual and then they fall into a hierarchy and they, all they do is try to get up on each other. And anybody below them is, you know, just like in the Draco, they actually urinate on those below them because they're property, and, you know, your property and you're a tool. That's all you are in the cabal at any level until you get to the very, very, very top. And the very top uses everything below them is like dirt. They don't care. You're yeah. dirt to them. So, you know, why anybody would belong to a system like that? It's just, you know, for a person that has all their chakras running and their brain going and some common sense, it's like stupid. Uh, and then you have to sell off your soul to be part of the, the, the group, too. And that's your eternal self. I mean, wow, really? How stupid can you be? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like uh, 16 plus one said these people are sick and stupid. So but, you know, that's their nature. And so the idea that uh, Sechen and the group was doing is to reveal themselves as the gods. And that's why they have the right to rule us with absolute impunity and power. Uh, and of course, it's not true. So I did a decode on that. And then I did the A. Durov Draco. And I've also done the uh, Zeta Reticuli, the Dorsi, the Maytree. And um, I think two weeks from now, I'll be finishing the negative group. And I did the Raptors. I'll be finishing with the negative groups of the Mantids, the, the negative part of the Mantids, the Ants. Um, the Borgia mm -hmm. and um, uh, two more groups. I can't get off the top of my head right now. So, I'll be, you know, I do that on Blessed to Teach. That's the main place I am most of the time every week. Okay. Excellent. Uh, the Great Lakes, uh, you know, with Indian, indigenous, uh, you know, uh, oral traditions. There's something you know mystical around there. So, with that being said, at the same time too, there's you know numerous uh, Nakua plants all around the Great Lakes. So that's once from a picture back in 1977. So you had you know mostly around Lake Michigan and Lake Ontario, but after this, you know they're seeing under construction. So it grew more and more, and you know as of today. That's what it is. So I know, you know, there's some under, deep underground tunnels there, uh, some bases too, and, you know, and more of that nature. So Gene, throughout your, your whole, you know, uh, or, uh, Navy career, could you share any uh, information that around this specific region here? So the Great Lakes uh, is actually pretty much every lake under all of it was the Cabal had created dump, the whole thing. And of course, if you look at what they call the Mitten or Michigan, uh, it's perfect because it extends up throughout and is surrounded by three of the Great Lake. So it's a perfect, they have maglevs and they run, it's pretty easy. They, they make it easy. It's... Um, 
follow the yeah. highways. They put them under highways a lot of the time, so you don't notice any vibration or sound because the highways have that anyway. So you have that, and then under the Great Lakes, going up into Canada, and then going to Cold Lake is the center for a lot of that connecting to the Great Lakes in um the nuclear facilities going from Point La Prue out to the Great Lakes, those are used for super soldier situations in which they use the nuclear radiation to enhance the super soldiers and create mutations and then generationally change the structure so that they create all kinds of super soldiers. That's why all the nuclear facilities uh, and uh, during Hurricane Dorian, I did a decode showing them taking out those nuclear facilities all the way up from, um, uh, what was that, port something in off the coast of Florida, I can't remember right now, but they took nuclear facilities out all the way up the entire eastern seaboard of the U.S., all the way up into Canada, and that hurricane actually went all the way up into past it didn't wind up down and disappear until it was between greenland and iceland mm. that's never been seen before so they kept that hurricane going the alliance did to take out all of these nuclear facilities uh super soldier factories going all the way up and the great lakes is, was the big part of that which the alliance has got that cleaned up now mm. and they're they have groups working in canada taking out but Canada is like very hard because um, every all the old mining tunnels um, going back to uh, the tunnels made by the ant people, all kinds of stuff. There, it's just a, like a an anthill, if you will, of tunnels and you know dumps connected to it. And so it's very complicated and difficult to clean up. But there, there's a lot of groups working on Canada. But they cleaned out the Great Lakes first so that you clean out the home base. And now they're going out. And so the Great Lakes is actually the remnants of the inland seas that used to be over the Earth. The Earth didn't have oceans originally. Mm -hmm. um, those didn't come into existence until about 140 million years ago when the continents all move to their current position within a 40 day period um, due to tearing apart the crust of the earth in a, in a war, uh, it's called the War of Gilgamesh that, between Atlantis and Lemuria. And so the continents on originally, the entire surface of the earth was one solid piece and they ripped in the, in the center of this, one of the inland seas that sat on top of the crust you yep. have these long S-shaped seas because if you spin a ball and you drop water on it, you'll see it makes an S. So you had one going, you know, one arc on above the crater, one arc below the crater going the other way. And of course, over time, the rain's depositing sand in the bottom of the ocean as it erodes from the areas that are not under the water. And then that creates sandstone. So that's weaker than the regular volcanic and, uh, metamorphic rock so it got weak and then when they cracked made a hole that uh caused a crack to go around the earth and caused the continents with the torque of the earth as it's spinning to pull the continents apart and so what's left and that's why it's so magical is the fresh water the massive amounts of fresh water one place it went there's a couple in the in asia and eurasia that is huge amounts of fresh water too but the Great Lakes is one of the largest concentrations is left of the freshwater seas. And so that's why all of the Great Lakes is pretty much freshwater. Thanks. Okay, so it's level as, uh, you know, on the water. So Gene, uh, then again, within the indigenous, you know, uh, oral, you know, or folklore uh, tradition. So, there's, you know, on, within, well, below the surface of the water, there's, you know, various entities, there's uh, portals. So, Gene, the, could you disclose or share what you're allowed to, uh, of what you experience, you know, uh, the different entities that you interact with or that you saw, or even, you know, the uh, stargates or portals? 
below the surface of the water? Yeah, so first of all, the earth has 13 chakras as a living being. All the, the God or the creator is a living being and living beings don't create death. So AI does that, but living beings don't. So the infinite creator, all that it creates is alive. So the earth has 13 chakra, which might line up 13 stargates. So the, um, the part of what the cabal has been trying to do is hijack the stargates and all to do that, you need to hijack the ley lines and all the, and create portals because they use portals because they can't use stargates. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out that you have to have a human with you to use a stargate. You can't go, that's why they were trying to interbreed with human um, being, you know, racial purists, why would they interbreed with humans? Uh, because they need, they thought by getting the genetics of all the original 64 strands of human gen genetics that they could be able to use the Stargate systems because when they would go into the gates, they would it would fry them. Even in cryos, they take the person out of cryo after they went through a Stargate, they'd still fry. So they created the portal system. So off the coast of the Bermudas, is a um, power crystal that they opened up a portal there that literally uh, from that war that I mentioned earlier, they used the power crystals of Atlantis to wage war. And that crystal created a rip in the space time continuum, a portal that went to other parallel earths and times and was causing like ships and aircraft and things to be caught and sent back and forwards and all over the place to parallel earths and different times and places. And that's located near, yeah, everybody knows the Bermuda Triangle, yeah. um, that area. That was shut down in 1987 by a very powerful uh, psychic woman in South America that shut that down. Um, but the Bahamas and all of that is the remnants, part of the remnants of Atlantis. Uh, there's what's called the Bimini Road. You can see that on the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the Cabal still uh, has domes. Most of them are clean. There was one I went in on the decode I did on South America that's in Nassau, in Bahamas, in Andros in Island, and all of that. And it goes throughout the entire, of course, in Cuba. And then yep. had one that went through the, uh, the uh, Cayman Islands was the hub that they hubbed out through Cuba and down into Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Haiti, uh, and all of the um, Virgin Islands. Of course, people know about Epstein, but mm -hmm. actually Richard Branson was the A-list Epstein's the B-list, that's the common people, you know, like the movie stars, that stuff. The Royals don't use the same locations. They are look at the others as like dirt. So they would never interact and do their rituals with the common people because they look at themselves as a different species and actually they are, as I went into previously. So they're a mixture of certain things. So they do their stuff on the A-list islands, which is Richard Branson had a 17 islands that go throughout the, from Florida and the Keys, all the way down to Trinidad and Tobago. And so they would have certain locations that they do on the portals. Mm -hmm. To open those portals up with black magic and death uh, of children to do ultra dimensionals pulled up demonics and things pulled up to do their bidding so that's throughout all the islands you can see them there saint luce uh saint vincent's martinique dominic guadalupe montserrat all of those that you're seeing barbade trinidad tobago he had facilities and things for doing these sacrifices throughout that entire chain and so what they're trying to do is to capture that ley line and control this so they can bring out same thing they were doing with the Vatican Dome that goes from the Vatican to Jerusalem. They're putting massive amounts of gold in there. It's taken from all over the earth because when gold forms by transmutation from quartz, 
it's capturing the quantum energy of where it forms. So where and when. So if you assemble gold from all over the earth in one location on a ley line at concentration point, uh, you create a portal and you can actually ensnare the entire earth at once. It's what they're trying to do. All of the ley lines, all of the portals and all of the stargates. They shut down almost all of the stargates. Um, the Alliance has been reorganizing and healing and opening a lot of those back up and NASA freaked out and on um, backstage on envisioning, we actually did that. And a week after we did the envisioning to heal a lot of the pyramids, the pyramids lit up. They literally started sending beams of energy. NASA showed it out to a giant space cloud that's heading for earth guide like you know runway lights guiding this space cloud in and nasa's all freaked out like what the heck because we did the pyramid in bosnia which is one of the biggest pyramids on earth it's more than twice as big and much older than the pyramid of giza it's made out of concrete so you can actually carbon dated it's been dated at forty thousand years old then the pyramid of the oldest one i know which is in the millions of years which is Mount Kalesh. And then there's a pyramid in the Grand Canyon. And so all these pyramids all over the world, and there's pyramids everywhere. So throughout that chain, you have pyramids too. And the cabal was using those pyramids or portals. And so like Chichen Itza and all of these are built on portals and Teotihuacan and all of that, there are dumbs under them too. So they would go into these dumps and do these sacrifices and do these rituals to bring up negative terrestrials and from other dimensions, densities, levels, and locations, as well as demonics to do their bidding and to join them to capture the earth and all of the human race. Because it, you know, they've been trying for millions of years to subdue the human race. They brought them down from 64 genetic strands originally down to two. And now that the great awakening is coming. The genetic strands are reorganizing and turning back on. So now you have in the fifties, what's called triple helix or TNA. Mm -hmm. And now you're actually getting children, the crystal children. Some of them are being born with PNA, which is pentahelix, five strands running. So humans are waking back up and coming back into the power of what they were originally created to be and taking back the planet. Um did you ever encounter uh, benevolent uh, water entities, just, such as mermaids? Um, in my travels, I've encountered a few. Um, not so much the water ones, strangled through my martial arts on land. Uh, I, you know, encountered quite a few. One thing I do with some of the uh, energy passing techniques is if you look on the surface of water, there are beings that skate on the surface of water that are ultra dimensionals that you can't normally see unless you know how to use your all three eyes coordinated together. You can see them. They look kind of like horseshoe crabs is one I like to look. They're very kind and gentle beings um, that are everywhere. And then on the ocean, there's different kinds of beings. Um, as well as the mer people and all of that that live deep on the bottom of the oceans and in the trenches and things like that. So yeah, I do like to surf. You know, when I was in the Navy, and haven't had some encounter with you know actually rubbing up against my legs while I'm out there surfing. <laughs> It was kind of fun. It was kind of nice and really soft skins. <laughs> really gentle, like a cat rubbing your leg. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is nice. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. So thanks a lot, Gene, uh, for all this uh, information. So we're going to keep, well, yeah, we're going to start up and open the uh, q and section. So we're going to go, you know, between half an hour to 45 minutes, max, max, max. So Gene, there wasn't a question in the chat, so I'm going to read it to you. So is there any time capsule in DOMS, meaning technology left by ancestors for the future in case of a cataclysm to respark civilization? And if so, what technology? So the main, the largest one is a ship that's under the Giza Plateau. There's a ship about 
one third the size of Africa that's underneath ultra dimensionally shifted uh, underneath the entire Giza plateau for that exact purpose. And then additionally in the inner earth, in the center of the earth, the Agarthans have been in that role through many cataclysms to restart civilization over and over. They've helped humanity come back from many, 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 many cataclysm. And now they're part of the Alliance helping clean out the dumps, the tunnels that go all the way down to the center of the earth, our Garthans, as well as several other groups that are there. There's other civilizations like Shambhala and Pantala and other groups in the inter-earth that Admiral Byrd met when he first went in. A warning about the use of nuclear warfare and that things they warned him and to tell the governments of the world there's actually an embassy to the Garthans and the the center earth beings in the empire state building if you get into the elevator and hit the right sequence of the keys for the floors it'll actually go to a floor that's not in the keys and that's an um, embassy for the inner earth beings that the cabal had <clears throat> an embassy they were trying to work with, you know, to work and play them to, to help them. Of course, they're not gonna do that. So now they're actually cleaning out some of the deep dumps. That's how they were able to get Shasta uh, cleaned out because that is one dumb, uh, one tunnel system that goes all the way to the center of the earth, to the hollow earth. Good day, greetings. You could go ahead, Cecilia. Oh, okay. Hi, so, um... I came in late because I work for UPS. I, I was on the road and, and stuff. So I came in a little bit late. So I heard something about Trinidad and Tobago. And um, I, I believe we people back home used to do um, black magic and stuff. But, you know, um, found out lately about what during the COVID found out about, um, you know, a lot of things like a lot of people awakening a lot of things and it's hard to believe like your know, consciousness is not is, is not tuning because we're so deeply programmed and um yeah so i was hearing something about um trinidad and tobago so um like what's what's what give me some information what's really going on yeah uh, so the cabal richard branson had a facility there for the a you know the boils to come down to take children from Trinidad Tobago, uh, and also local sorcerers, uh, witches, and things would provide them to mm -hmm. get power from the cabal and the demonics that they would bring up during those ceremonies. So the Trinidad and Tobago is a very good source, uh, along with South America, because of the lower uh, third world kind of uh, people aren't impoverished more so mm -hmm. children can go missing easier so they have more access so and it's so close to south america that they would be able to take them very easily and do the it's trinidad and tobago is actually on a ley line um that's and has a portal there so that's why they were doing that there mm -hmm. yeah so um so I know a little about Haiti. So recently you're find on, finding out a little more, the more you're tuning with the spirit and, you know, um, you know, God puts things in your, in your path and you learn a little more. And so I know a little bit about Haiti and, you know, like the Clintons and Haiti and it's connected to um, uh, Jeff Epstein and all that stuff. So that's, that was like the beginning of what I heard and stuff. So, um, yeah, and I also, uh, a friend of a friend flee from Trinidad because they say um, the government was doing some kind of satanic kind of ritual kind of thing. And, and, and so now I'm, I'm hearing more about it. So, yeah, so we're waking into a lot of things. Uh, what advice you, you can keep, like tell people to, because I'm, I'm I know there's a lot of suicidal. I know there's a lot in the world. Uh, very depressed and um, like, you know, I'm, I'm a Trump fan. Um, you know, what advice would, could you give us and, and to, you know, keep, keep the faith there and um, to hold on that, you know, good things are coming. Yeah, um, and soon. 
actually, um, to get, uh, for me to get a procedure that you live your life by so that every morning I get up, I give thanks to the day, to the creator or to God, in other words. And so to, for those that don't see God or don't have the relationship to get a relationship that if you look, I mean, the idea that everything was a big, huge explosion, the cabal's idea, the big, big bang, uh, you don't create perfect organization, perfect order through chaos. Um, you create chaos, create explosions, create a disharmony. So if you go into a, a car salvage yard and you start blowing it up, you're not going to assemble a Ferrari or a brand new 767 by blowing it up more and more and more. You're just going to create more destruction and more chaos. But if you look in creation, there's a, a, a function called phi, which is the golden mean, and it's related to everything. Every, your DNA spiral, the digits in your hands and arms, the relationship of the, the length of the digits, like the fingers to the wrist and the wrist to the elbow, that's five proportion. The way a cyclone or a hurricane of spiral, as you go out, the length from the center to each of the arms of the spiral is the five proportion. Same thing in the Milky, in the Milky Way and the galaxies they have that same proportion, your ear. The way it spirals has that same proportion. You're seeing the proportion that creates everything. It's that proportion, meaning that if there's one proportion and the beauty of all of nature and all of creation is built on that, then there's one creator. To, to see that, feel that, and through the martial arts, you know, you can connect that, but also through just um, the way the easiest way is to give thanks each day at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day run through, I run through all of creation and the Milky Way and the solar system and then the planet and then where I am and all the things in my life and then it, my meal, the, all the parts of the food. And then I say, thank you for all that. And I visualize all of creation and creator. And then I wait for your welcome. So it took me, because my second martial arts instructor could do things I, I couldn't understand how you could do them. I'm like, this is impossible. It's like you have a lot of string, G, but you got no power, no connection to source. So he taught me this. It took me six months, but I actually heard your welcome. Like tap on my shoulder, hand placed gently on my right shoulder, whisper in my ear, you're welcome, G. And I like jumped up. I was in a, in, a, in a sandwich shop in a subway. I was looking under the table. <laughs> where the, only me and the guy, it was early in the morning that made my sandwich and rang it up. Oh, where's the person I just said, you're welcome. <laughs> so I got that connection to source, to God. And so once you have that connection, you know you're not alone. And you know that this plan, that always when the human race, if you have a quorum that stands up against the darkness, and the evil of the cabal and all of that that serves darkness that God always steps in. So you always have a Red Sea moment where the sea parts or you know whatever is required. So now the, the quorum is standing up, the alliance is standing up against the cabal. Well, he'll have another Red Sea moment. So I don't have any doubt of that. The plan is God's plan and it's in God's time. It's not in our time, it's in God's time. And so I know that because I can feel it when I do my martial arts. I can feel it when I give my thanks over the road. The, your welcome is so powerful now that I literally feel it through my entire body, like way beyond an orgasmic kind of feeling of like all the hair stands on you, know, goosebump everywhere. You know, it's this wave of, of love and compassion and gratitude. When I say thank you, I get your welcome. Like when you say somebody, thank you, you always should wait for your welcome. You just turn around, and walk away, and <laughs> say you're welcome to your back. <laughs> no, and if they really mean it, you know, you can feel if it's sincere. So, you know, not just like, oh yeah, you're welcome. You know, you know, you're welcome. Thank you, Taino, for having me on the show. So, you know, you can feel that gratitude when they say you're welcome and thank you if it's real. And so, once you feel that coming from Creator. You have that all the time, so you don't have to be freaked out or upset. But And then, so I have a procedure where I get up and I give thank you at the beginning of the day, thank you at the end of the day, and getting your welcome. And then I do my, you know, some workout to get my energies flowing. 
my Tai Chi, Qi Gong, some push-ups, sit-ups, etc. And several times of the day, but I get up with that, go to bed with that. And then I get out and walk my dog. And, you know, you can see my beautiful dogs here. And I look at the beauty of nature. I do some Tai Chi, some sun gazing. I pull in the healing power of the creator into my heart and through my body. And so, you know, appreciate your time. Uh, the, you know, the cabal wants us to believe there's not enough of whatever, that there's not enough gold because their 99.9999999% of everything is under their, you know, they've squirreled it away. And that's 0.0001% of everyone. You know? So of course it looks like there's not enough stuff, but creator created an infinite amount of everything, but one thing. For one thing, there's only one. And that's the moment you're in. So don't let the moments of your life pass by unappreciated because it comes by once. Live in the moment and appreciate that you're here and that God gave you this time and don't take it for granted. Don't take the gifts you have and who you are and the body you have that he gave you created in his image, you know, three cardiovascular systems. You actually have like creation six and one. You have six bodies in your spirit that keeps you. You have your etherical body, your physical body, your astral body, your causal body, your mental body, and your eternal body, your soul. That's six, six days of creation and the Holy Spirit, one day of rest. You're literally a microcosm of the macrocosm of the creator, the creator itself of all of creation is within us. So look at the beauty of what you're given and give gratitude for all of those in your life and for the time you're given and the beauty around you. And then to stand up for that and then be there in service so that, that it can be of service to you. So that there's a give and receiving and create, you know, that we're part of it all. As this says, where we go one, we go all. So thank you. That's a beautiful question, Cecilia. Uh, unfortunately, I'll have to let the other people that that's in line. You know, okay. so what we could do is we could come back again, but we'll let you know the other uh, uh, people have a chance. Get a chance, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So yeah, indeed, that was a good question by Cecilia. So next we have Keisha, and then after this, uh, Chofiri. So, Keisha, go ahead. Present yourself. Hi, you ask your Hi I'm Kay um, from Montreal. Um, so, I've always believed that there was existence of mystical creatures. So, the fact that you kind of confirmed that, could you go into a little bit more details on, um, for example, the Mer people, um, how they look? Have you interacted with them? What kind of beings are they? Uh, even though I was mostly in the Navy, I'm kind of more of a land person, <laughs> strangely enough. <laughs> so the one I mostly interact, I love the elementals. Um, I love it, interacting with the elemental. Um, in the U.S., we had a song that, you know, called the wind, they call the wind Mariah. Um, the fire is Joe. The wind is, t uh, the rain is Tess. And they call the wind Mariah. Those are the names of those elementals. People think that, you know, the cabal has made you believe through their religion of science that those are natural things, but everything that the creator does is alive. So the elementals are a living thing. So, you know, when I got that connection with Mariah, for example, we have, you know, in the fall, the leaves and it gets huge piles in my yard and I blow out there with my leaf blower and it's blowing. I blow this way, it blows the other way. So I go that way, now it blows back the other way. I'm like, Mariah, can we like focus in one direction? Please? All of a sudden the wind just uh, from one direction only started going back and forth and back and forth until I finish all the leaves. Then I went to my carport, which has got a roof and fence on three sides, solid. So I have to blow the least blow in there. I have to blow them out from under the car. So I get my back up against the fence behind me and I get ready to turn my leaf blower and a wing comes up from the fence. <laughs> from the fence, a solid fence, there's no hole. It <laughs> blows the leaves out of the carport from under the car. And then it goes in a little tornado out in the, under the tree and piles them up in a pile for me. I'm like, wow, that's awesome, Mariah, thank you. 
<laughs> bang it up. Then the wind starts going all over the place. So, you know, having that relationship, I said, thank you, Mariah. You know, and I had also where it's going to get solar power and it was getting ready to hell. And the guy said, I have to cancel. I go, I don't have time to keep rescheduling. He go, well, just pull your truck into the driveway. He goes, what difference will that make? I go, well, I'm, you know, it's not considerate to interfere with my neighbor's weather, but I'm just asked for favor here. So if you would pull in, he goes, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> I just, just humor me. Go ahead, go up on the roof. I'll go up with you. And I go, you know, meditate. And I talk to the tests. I said, could you not hail on the house for a while? And literally my neighbor's like, you know, not even 25 yards on either side. It's hailing on my house, completely blue sky over the house. He's like, that was weird. <laughs> so he finishes the, the inspection, gets in his truck. I go, make sure you roll your window up. And I said, thank you, Tess. And then it starts hailing. <laughs> He's like, roll the window down. Low. That was amazing. <laughs> you know? So I love to have the relationship, you know, the same when I'm teaching survival training out in the wilderness and I have like how to start fire. And the student, get to the point where you know i'm doing bow drill or you know hand drill or a flint or a piece of ice as a magnifying glass and they can't start a fire no matter i'm doing it every every way you know and they can't start a fire go what'd you do to piss off the joe you know the fire devil because <laughs> you're not getting enough we eventually get to gasoline and a lighter <laughs> and they can't get a fire the lighter won't work for them i'm like wow you need to apologize to the joe and if you go to mexico you will actually they had a bridge in mexico city uh, over, uh, overpass it kept falling down and they realized that they had interfered with some of the deva and so the little people so they built houses under the bridge and, and said, you can stay here and we won't bother you and did a ceremony for them and apologized for messing up their area and said, uh, you know, we need the bridge to not fall down though. And so after that, the bridge quit falling down. So you see all over the world, the Deva and the Deva are, you know, many, many types, but for example, in Hawaii, they call Minahuni in Ireland, leprechaun. And so all in Philippines, Dwindy. So all over the world, you see like little people, they talk about all kinds of different magical being. And those all do exist. And many children and animals always see them. Like, you know, my house is full of them. And my dogs, when they were a puppy, used to bark. For most people, they go, what's your dog barking at the floor? <laughs> Run around in a circle around the part of the floor. And, you know, would shake its head because it would like to get in the fur and sleep up on the thick worm fur. And the neck of my wife's dog has a part malamute. So she has like six inch deep fur. They love it. And she got used to it. But, you know, the little people uh, will help you. There's all kind of different like they call uh, borrowers and different ones throughout all time. And children are taught that that doesn't exist. So once you're taught something isn't, you actually, your mind will filter it out and you won't see it anymore. And so by letting go of the lies of the cabal, uh, that's not there because they actually had a, what got involved in a war against them. If you go to Thailand and you go to the where the Jade Buddha sits, there's a big, huge uh, like temple around that. And on the inside of that wall, they've been painting the history of Thailand ongoing for hundreds and hundreds of years. If you go way back, you can see a battle in which they're fighting mer people and uh, like flying individuals and all kinds of elemental and different things because they created by torture, a species twisted them called the jinn from the genies. And so the Deva went to war against them. They signed a treaty eventually because they're not gonna prevail over you know, that type of being. So they, they did a treaty, which they actually broke uh, in, uh, in 2018 because of the situation with leave, losing control of uh, the, solar system through solar warden and part of the dark fleet defecting, they took back our entire solar system. So the cabal thought they would raid a magic, magic army at the 10 kingdoms, which is where those magical beings come from is 10 parallel universe called the 10 kingdom. Uh, yeah, 
that's about the stupidest thing you could possibly do. Magical beings wouldn't have a magical alarm system. So they, you know, magical in the terms of, and if you get in the space program, as you get up, it becomes more like magic than anything else. That's what they actually say in the space program is it's the science is so high, it seems like magic. And so, you know, what you're talking about is a science, the magical being have a science that's so millions of years advanced from what human realized that things we think like, just like the Mayan ships uh, in their space program look like giant, long cigar kind of cylinder things made out of solid rock. Um, how exactly does a rock fly? <laughs> right? So, you know, it's science that is, things that the human race has lost up for a long time. And so these magical beings exist throughout all of the place and have uh, just a, an advanced science. And by learning to see again, you can actually learn to get a relationship with them. Um, if you're kind, considerate, respectful, they don't normally show themselves to big people because of what the cabal has done, like with the jinn and other situation. But yeah, they exist all over. Thanks a lot, Keisha, for that question. Yeah, was, thank you. Another good question with, you know, uh, solid information by Gene. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, that name is pronounced Exophorai. Exophorai, thank you. It's, it, it's another word for Christopher. Um, Gene, how are you doing this afternoon? Nice to have you here with us. Thank you. Nice to have you and meet you. Um, I'm, I, was born in another country. I grew up in Montreal. Um, there is a tunnel that runs from the island of Montreal to the south shore, La Rive Sud. Uh, I remember the first time my parents, uh, my father, drove us in the car under that in that tunnel. That tunnel goes underneath the St. Lawrence River. Uh, it was in the winter time, and we could see different forms of ice coming through tiny little cracks or just because the river is so frozen and cold, you see uh, little, little icicles and stuff on the inside of the walls. Do you know if there are any tunnels, um, base tunnels, in the, under the St. Lawrence River? Uh, yes, there's dumps and tunnels, and they're actually, the Alliance is taking out one at the headwaters uh, coming into that from, of course, the, the Arctic area coming down into the St. Lawrence Freeway and uh, seaway and um, they're taking out some of the dumb but there's a submarine tunnel that runs underneath that entire seaway all the way down into the Great Lakes under Montreal and it connects to a dumb the city of Montreal has a dumb under it the whole city wow oh okay so you said there is a submarine tunnel yes underneath yes. Yep. So they have they have water underneath the river, <laughs> underneath the St. Lawrence River. There's a another tunnel. They have water there, and so that a submarine can travel under it. Yes, that's true. Um, all over the wow. world, the, all of the major rivers have essentially rivers five to ten times bigger that flow towards the ocean that are under them. So if you look at the Missouri and the Mississippi, the same thing. Um, the, the, the whole state of Florida is essentially the Everglades is just a river flowing to the sea at about three to four knots. And so the idea that Cabal was using is to power the dumbs with nuclear submarine. So nuclear submarines could pull into the dumb and they'd hook up the submarine and power the entire dumb with the submarine because, you know, a nuclear submarine develops massive power. It was a good source of uh, energy for to power the dumb. Wow, that's hot. Mm. Uh, Gene, uh, remember uh, I sent you an information last year regarding uh, one of the, the mount and uh, actually uh, the fact we have what we call here in Montreal, the Mont Royal. So, uh, and I did send you some pictures. So, you know, that's the Mont here and, you know, there's an hospital here. Uh, McGill University. There's even like on the other side, university. And uh, well, you know, I've been tapping that uh, 
Yeah, your, your pictures were excellent. Yeah, all of those locations you sent me are parts of the entrances for the dome under Montreal. They love to do that from under colleges, of course, always Masonic lodges. Uh, have an entrance to the facilities that are underneath to do the sacrificing. They always do that. Um, also prison complex, universities, the, uh, hospitals. These are prime locations where you have a captive population you can tap into, especially universities. They do a lot of the ultra, you know, for people that they need later to do things like what happened in Colorado and Boulder, Colorado, those events where they do that. Those are ultra into the ultra individuals like they did at uh, Cold Lake and uh, also for the Dom in Montreal. So, yeah, your pictures are phenomenal. Appreciate that. And X, X. <laughs> I kind of forgot uh, the proper uh, the proper way of doing it, but thanks, Chris. So last question here. So we have JR. So go ahead, JR. You can unmute yourself. And go uh, go ahead with your question. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks, uh, Taino. Thanks, Eugene, for that uh, for that presentation. Um, there's a lot of information right there, but um, I have a um, few about the portals. Um, you said that um, there's different ancient sites all over the world. Uh, we were talking about Chichen Itza, Giza, and uh, pyramids in the um, Grand Canyon. But um, you told us that um, there's still uh, people that can activate those portals. But since they are um, made from ancient, let's say, technology, why um, there's a need to activate those portals? Uh, you, you, you need some, um, you were talking about uh, human sacrifice for this. So that's, that would be one question. And the other question is, um, do we still have people who have uh, this knowledge? Yeah. Meaning that, that um, yeah. is there people right now that are using those portals? Yes, they still use the portal as well. Also the ancient peoples, like in your country, the natives originally knew how through uh, connecting to creator and giving respect and honor through certain dancing and singing to open the portal to positive area, not negative area, to create and serve the tribe as well, and the heal people and to heal the land and to, to connect with creator. So um, this was been done for ancient times. That's why the cabal built it and hijack it. Uh, because that was already available. So they hijack it to go to negative realm. But it's been there um, since ancient times. Excuse me. When you said Kabbal, what, what do you mean exactly? You said the Kabbal people. The, yeah, can you spell Kabbal, it? Yeah, Kabbal would be the 13 bloodlines and the negative terrestrial groups like the Draco, the Zede, Alpha Draco, Zede Reticuli, Mantid, Dorsi, Maitri. Uh, the gray uh, uh, mantid mo mostly or the, and, and uh, kind of brownish red are the negative groups. So that's when I say cabal, that's the one I'm referring to is the one that's been trying to hijack the earth and own it and control it and the human race to become a, an entirely 100% slave uh, commodity for them to use. But those people, they don't show themselves to the public eye. No, they don't. The one that we know of that you hear are actually lower level. So you talk about the Rothschild, the Carnegie, the Rockefeller. These, these are lower level in the cabal. The big families, the, the ones way up, very few people. And the ones at the very top, they don't, you're not even going to hear of the name or even have ever heard of it. All right, JR, so you had a question regarding who was, uh, you know, uh, interacting with the portals and you had like another sub question again. Oh, I was just uh, asking if there is um, still people with that knowledge since um, those ancient, let's say, technologies were lost. Um, who are the people who are still using it? That was, uh, yeah. and for what, yeah. for what purpose? 
there are still some uh, medicine people from ancient time that have passed that down to through one person at a time for very long time that still use it in an honorable way. And then the cabal still, you know, that I mentioned earlier, still use it to bring in demonic factions and negative groups. And so they use the portal. So if you look up ancient sacred site, or if you know of them in your country, those would be location. And also the, you know, like the pyramid, of course, and Mount Kalesh, Stonehenge, all of those kind of the Nazca lines, all of those kind of places are always going to be those uh places where you would find portal and dumps. You said portal and dumps, right? Yes, sir. So 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 dumps, what's the, the main difference when you say dumps exactly? Dumb is a deep underground military facility or deep under Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Thank you, JR. So I right, thank you. Appreciate it. So we're coming to an end. Uh, we don't want to take more of Gene's time. So uh, thanks again to the people who's been attending and the one who's going to watch the show and the one also who asked the question to Gene. So inform, first and foremost, Gene, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. All right. So thanks a lot of, you know, answering my requests and the email and thanks of being here and sh sharing your knowledge and you know to all of us that's you know been listening to you over the past hour so it's really much appreciated gene oh thank you so much taino for allowing me to enter uh and in inviting me into your platform uh really appreciate it and it's been wonderful and uh very unique and different so very much appreciated and um, very honored to be able to have such beautiful people and beautiful question that come to your site and also for you. Thank you so much. God bless. So, hey, thank you, Gene. So, Gene, as you may know, uh, a lot of people you know, would have much more questions, but that would, if you're, because uh, I know that would be someone, uh, that would be something a lot of people would share. So probably having you back and uh, just build and continue on that topics. So Gene, before you go again, could you state how people, if you're okay with this, how can they communicate with you and where can they uh, hear and see your information? Yeah, thank you. I'd love to come back if you would like to have me back. Uh, we can set up another date and time anytime that we're both available. Um, so for Canada, I actually have co a coordinating team. There's a person that has a coordinator in many of the different provinces. So uh, through the G my Gmail again, uh, which is uh, C-O-L-O-S-E-N-S-E-I-6-4 at gmail.com. And from there put in C-A, in the subject line in capital letter CA backslash with the two letter designator for the province so that the local coordinator can attend because the coordinators we do monthly meeting and they have like takes sometimes up to a year for them to get through all the materials and train and do zoom session which train them and get all of the information and you know a lot of them are you know doing their own decodes now and very very knowledgeable and very aware and a very awake. So uh, the Canadian coordinator can help all of Canada. And if you have people listening from other places, make sure if you're from the US, the US in caps with the two letter backslash designator of the state. And if you're in a foreign country, put the name of the country because have coordinators that help with the Gmail called the Bless for Service team that are all over the world. So um, go ahead and send the question to there and just put in the subject line your location. Sounds good. Sorry, can you read back that email again, Gmail, please? One more time, yeah. sorry. So first I'll do it uh, phonetically, military style. Charlie, Oscar, Lima, Oscar, Sierra Echo, November, Sierra Echo, India, 64 at gmail.com. That's Colo, C-O-L-O-S-E-N, sei64 at gmail.com. 
Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jean, to watch uh, your show and your information. So it was Jean Onglish. One of them is Jean Onglish, right? What's that? Uh, to you. So the people said they, they could go on the internet and watch one of your watch to watch, you know, one of your uh, your various shows or the one. Okay. Yeah. The main place I am is um, blessed to teach. I'm on there three, four days a week. I'm backstage and then twice a month on the unleashed is another layer backstage, but I'm also on front stage. Like next week, I'll probably do with the Netherlands coordinator, two dumb decodes. Also, there'll be another decode that'll be going on from the Germany team, be doing some decode for the, and the Europe team shortly on that as well on domes and different things about satanic symbols overlaying cities and things like that. Um, I'm also frequently uh, a bi-weekly on Kirsten W. Um, also a regular guest on um, Spiritually Raw, uh, up front in the prophetic um, periodic guest on His Glory uh, with David. Um, also, I've been on a couple of times with uh, Michael Jaco, um, periodically on with... I mean, there's so many, I'm losing track. I'm sorry. Those are the main ones. <laughs> right. I had the first one with a lady named Sandra in Australia this week. And, um, oh, yeah, yesterday, and I'm on bi-weekly with Linda Paris with Sarge. Uh, it's kind of, we do a, a just a conversation like this about different things. Uh, it's really great. So I'm on quite often on Linda Paris's platforms as well. Excellent, Gene. So thanks a lot. So then again, uh, we're coming to an end, but we'll, you know, uh, with Gene's approval, we'll be able to have another session with him. So first and foremost, thanks to uh, everyone that's been here. All right. And thank you to Gene as well. A pleasure and honor. Thank you so much. And I like the Aboriginal way. Uh, may the divine oneness uh, be part of your life and may you walk in service to the divine oneness. Or in Native America, in the US, they call it Wakimasa. So thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Gene, and blessing to you and all the people. So we'll, I'll let the people know about the next show with Gene. And for this, you know, stay safe for everyone.